Today, I'm gonna to continue with the modifications on the GSXR. Sorry it's taken me so long, it's just been so much going on and I was really hoping to have moved by the time I did these videos. But today, we've got another video. So I've got a track day booked for next Monday, which is a week away today. It's at Donington Park, first time I've been to Donington Park. So I want to actually install some of the bits and bobs I've got onto the GSXR to make it a better track bike. So this video today is about what essentials or what upgrades can you do to your bike to make it brilliant on track. So before we get into all the details, you know what we've got to do, Chopsy, roll it. So there are two products I'm fitting on the bike today. The first one is a quick shifter. Now this is a quick shifter from TransLogic. I showed this a few, few months ago when I did the last uh, job on the brakes on the GSXR, which we'll come on to in a minute. I'll show you what I've done with the brakes if you haven't seen that already. But I've got a TransLogic quick shifter to fit to the bike, one of their IntelliShift systems. So that's the first thing we're gonna be fitted. And I've also got a rather tasty little product which Heeltech UK sent me. It's actually, Heeltech have released a data logger. So, and I'm not gonna do a massive amount of track days on this, but I quite fancy having a mess around with a data logger just to look at your lap times. And this data logger is a full proper data log logger. And what's so cool about it, it all just, it all runs on your phone basically. So you can have your phone mounted to your bike and you can look at that data in real time as you're riding with your lap times and everything. Or you can then look at it after you've been out, get your phone out and look at and review all of that data. It captures things like gear changes, obviously speed, track position with the GPS unit, um, all sorts of stuff you can plug it into. So basically a full on data logger. So I'm gonna be installing that as well. I'm really interested in that. And I can have all that set up and we can capture some, data, capture some data from my trip to Donington next week. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. I've got things like the link pipe, the power commander, but because the Donington day is a 98 dB day, I'm not gonna be able to fit the link pipe. So I'm gonna have to leave the cat on. So it's gonna be quite a techie video. We're gonna be going into all the wiring diagrams, looking at the instructions from both of the products to see how easy they are to install. I better shut up, we've got to get on. Let's get to it. So here is the bike, it's a K8 GSXR. In the last video, we, I sorted out the brakes was the, was the main thing I did, or tried to sort out the brakes. If you haven't seen the update, basically I fitted now an RCS master cylinder. So I bit the bullet, I bought an RCS master cylinder and also I now have the latest uh, Brembo GSXR calipers as well. So basically I had issues with bleeding the system, a lot of brake drag. You can see now, look at those. That is lovely. I mean, look at that. That is like perfect. They're not even hardly dragging at all. So the brakes are fully, fully sorted on this bike now. And I, I know I know I had trouble bleeding. Everyone said, oh, you got to bleed from the master cylinder. I was bleeding from the master cylinder. When I fitted all this, I literally bled the brakes in 10 minutes. So, and I've got a lovely brake feel now. I mean, that is it. That is the movement on the brakes. And you've got so much feel and power with this setup. So if you've got a GSXR, you're not happy with the standard brakes, an RCS master cylinder, We'll sort it. Ooh, look at that. I did have the Dunlop Sport Smart TTs on this bike, which I thought were very, very good tires. But as it's a Pirelli, a Pirelli track day, they wanted me to swap the tires to Pirellis. I will be putting the uh, Dunlop Sport Smart TTs back on after these are worn out. So these are just on because it's a Pirelli track day. There's nothing wrong with the Dunlop tires. These are just going on because I'm on a Pirelli track day. Wouldn't have been very good running Dunlop tyres on a Pirelli held track day. I thought those tyres were free. Yes, Mavis, that's right. They did send them to me for nothing, all right? You had to get in there. Yes, Pirelli sent me the tyres for nothing. Okay, deal with it. Shut up, Mavis. So here is the kit. This is the data logger from Heeltech. You've got the little GPS module. You've got all the wiring and clips, etc. And this is the TransLogic IntelliShift Quick Shifter. What I'm going to do, I think, is actually fit the Quick Shifter first. But first of all, of course, the bike's got to be stripped down. Tank off, seats off, probably airbox off as well, because I've got to get to the coil pack. So let's get stripping. No one wants to see that. Yes, the bike, Mavis, not me. Oh. 
So I've disconnected everything, just got to uh, pull out the main pin that holds the back of the tank on and I can lift everything out of the way. There we go, that's the pin. And then we should. Oh, oh bloody hell, I must have filled out with fuel, that was a ton. Don't drop it on the H2. That's the tank removed. I do need to now get into the air box, but I'm, I'm so impressed with how clean this bike is. I mean, even though it's got 15,000 miles, 14 years old, it was 12 years old, and look how clean it all is under here. You know, it's quite impressive for an old bike to still be as clean as this. Loving that. Okay, that's the air box lid off. Filter. Well, the guy did put a new filter in it when he serviced it. Got a couple of uh, rubber hoses here just to pop off so I can lift this. Lift this out of the way. You know, the breather here as well to pop off. Breathers. All going good so far. Tempting fate. Yeah, as I said that, maybe I thought that may not have been a very good idea. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. We've also got air temperature sensor take off here as well. Finally got the air box off. Uh, let me show you the air box. So I've got the air box off in the end. For future reference, anyone else wanting to do this, the uh, I thought I couldn't see how I got to these clips, but there's like two clips on one screw, if you like. So um, yeah, just undo the uh, the Allen keys at either side, and it undoes the clips around each of these. I was like, I can't see where to get to the ones in the middle, but they're all on one on one clip. So yeah, it's quite clever. So this is the uh, quick shifter. This is the two lots of cables. So it's got two channels, the quick shifter. So basically it adjusts um, the kill, the, the, the spark interrupt differently between the two sets of spark plugs. So, you know, that's why it makes a nicer shift. It sort of doesn't just cut everything down at once. It sort of staggers the cut time across all of the coil packs. So we've got two lots of connectors here. These basically piggyback onto those coil pack cables. So we just got, I've got the instructions up, just got to check the right colors because it depends on the model as to if the wire, if the 12 volt feeds the right way round. So potentially you may have to pull some of the pins on these cables and reverse them. So it's a little bit complicated to make sure and you've got to know which is your live 12 volt feed to your coil packs. I've had to get the um, wiring diagram up to confirm. Let me show you. I had to go to the wiring diagram and everything. So here's my instructions. This is the setup for the GSXR. Okay, that's the coil packs and each is four of them, the piggyback cables. If we look at the wiring diagram, <laughs> we all get very technical. So I just had to confirm that that orange cable was, which one was the live feed sort of thing. So if you look on here, orange and white, these are the, coil, these are the four coil packs. The orange and white cable is the positive. Okay, so that's what you need to check. You've got, a, and you could just use a meter to, if you, if you can't go to the wiring diagrams, you could normally can, I downloaded it, this is just from Google. So I just Googled it, but you can put a multimeter on it and check which of those two wires going into the call packs is a, is a permanent live or a switch live from the ignition. And it is the orange and white on the GSXR. So going back to the instructions, what it actually shows is a black and red but it's the switch live. So you've got to make sure the switch live would connect to the blue wire of the, uh, the quick shifter. So let's just go and check that's the case. So we've got four coil packs, one for each cylinder, of course. And looking at the instructions, the wire, which is we need to, we need to connect in for the quick shifter into the 12 volt switch feed into the coil packs, which is the orange and white cable. There's an orange and white on every one. So you pop off the coal pack, connect to this one, check that the blue is in line with your um, you know, switched live, which, which is orange and white, as I confirmed on here. So blue, so that's into the positive side. And then we should find that we have this one to plug back onto the connector. And that's it, and then basically repeat for the others. But what I have done, I haven't threaded the cables through, so <laughs> I need to do that You're first. You're an idiot. Getting carried away, let's start again. So that's the module. So I might try and mount this at the back of the bike, but I'm just checking that the cables are gonna be long enough to uh, to reach everything. So that's the where the sensor plugs in. So we also got to fit the sensor 
into the gear linkage down there. But I think the cable will be long enough to reach to here. Um, that goes to the battery negative terminal. And then you've got these two wires which go to the coil packs. But I think again, even with at the back of the bike, there's enough wire. So there we go, all connected, all piggybacked. It means I've got a lot of lot of cables down here, a lot of connectors, and but it's all I've all zip tied it down, it's all nice and low. The airbox is obviously gonna sit directly over this lot, but I think it's all tucked in enough that it's not gonna obstruct the airbox when it goes back on. So here we have the Translogic uh, sensor. So this has got to basically go into your shift rod here. Look at the instructions, there's some really detailed instructions about the best place to mount this. The best place to mount it is as close to the gear lever as possible, this side or that side. It mustn't be in the middle. So here's gonna be an issue because, I well, it may just, I'll try and get it this side, but and the lever's quite close to the, the uh, mechanism behind, so I may have to go this side. What I've done first of all is I've moved my rear sets down to the lower position. You've got two positions on the GSX. So it was on the higher position, I've moved it down just to make it a little bit more comfortable. You also got several different options for sort of tie rods and stuff. And of course, what you want to do is this, obviously there's a bar, there's a bit of threaded bar which connects that into that so you can get everything uh, attached like that. But what you'd be careful of, obviously, that is would be maximum adjustment. So this bar comes with slots in it. If you can see, there's little slots here. The idea being you can saw these off, hacksaw these off to adjust the length. So I think I'm going to take one nodule off so I've got a little bit more adjustment if I want to go up and down slightly with the lever. Because if I go with the standard length, you know, it's, it's going to be no adjustment to move that up anymore. Whereas I think probably that wants to come up a tiny little bit. So hacksawing complete. I've taken off the last little nodule. Just about perfect that. Done on the linkage. That is a bit of a nightmare to get everything sort of lined up. And there's a little bit here, a bit of loose. I think they're just to like hide the, the adjustment thread, you know? And then you wiggle this and it will move the, but I've locked it all off now. But uh, yeah, it's uh, taken a little while to get that where I think I want it. So I'll have to ride it, test it, see if that's in the right position. You know, the gear can move up and down freely, up through the gears. So yeah, so there we go. So that's the sensor in position. Took a little bit of faffing though, I <laughs> have to be honest. And uh, yeah, I won't know if that's all working properly until we test it. There we go, done. Now I just need to test it. Happy with the gear linkage, all I've got set up there. I've now mounted the unit down in the tail. I'll show you in a second. Um, this, I've had one of these before, these Translogic Intelli shifts on my old Firebay project. That was about seven years ago. Since then, the actual unit itself is quite a bit smaller than the old one, I've noticed that. Also the wiring length has been optimised and with the mounted at the back of the bike, the wiring length is absolutely perfect to run through to the coils. And even the wiring to go from the, the actual switch here, the switching unit to the, to the harness is perfect length. So wiring's perfect length. Instructions are good. I mean, these are so, what I like about the Translogic Translogic Quick Shifter is they're designed and set up for the bike already. So you buy one, for the GSX R1000 and it's set up to work on the GSX R1000, you know, and vice versa with other models. You don't have to do any setup. I don't have to now sit down and go through and start setting it up and all that. It's fitted, it's done. There is some adjustment on the back of the unit itself. So if you do need to adjust any kill times, you can do that. It even comes with a little screwdriver to do the adjustments, but it's, it's a manual adjustment with a screwdriver on the back of the unit. But, um, but yeah, it's all on. So on the next video, we will test this on the road and on the track for my Donington track day. I'll give you some feedback on what I think to it um, and go from there. So what I do have to fit now is the, the HeelTech um, data logger. Now, this video has gone on too long, so I'm gonna split that into a second video, but don't worry, I'm not gonna make you wait very long for that. That's gonna come straight after this one, more or less. So the, the data logger will come next. So if you wanna see that, you make sure you don't miss it you better hit that subscribe button but uh very successful installation hopefully yet to test it but i'm happy how, with how that went 
There we go. Thanks for watching. As always, chaps, really appreciate it. And I'll see you when I'm fitting the data logger. See you soon.